Right, so this is page 22, question 5. You're given this pentagon-based uh, pyramid, um, the height of 70, five equal sides, all at length of 30. Uh, some of you are having a bit of problem with actually drawing the pentagon at the very beginning. You're given the side of 30, and you know all the sides are the same length, and they're all the same angle, because it's a, it's a symmetrical shape. So with a pentagon, the angle at each corner should be 72 degrees, and you get that by taking 360 degrees, which is a full shape, dividing it by the number of sides the object has, which is 5 in this case. Gives you an answer of 72. That's your angle for all your corners. To get the dead center of the pentagon, what I did was bisected any of the five corners twice. And with the two intersecting lines crossed over, was the dead center. And then all I had to do was join it back to the remaining tree. The elevation then was straightforward enough. So you'd start off by drawing your plan view. You're working backwards almost in this question. You drew your plan view first, your elevation after. Now, that's the, the views drawn, straightforward enough. The actual question itself then, the first part is asking for a true length of the line of intersection between surfaces A and B. So if you look at surfaces A and B that are labelled here in plan view and in elevation, they have a line in common. That line in common is the line of intersections where the two planes intersect each other. What they're asking for in the question is a true length of it. So as it stands, we don't see a true length of it because it's angled away from us. You can only see the true length of something when you're looking straight at it. So in that case, we're going to create an auxiliary view, and we're going to look straight at that line of intersection, which means looking perpendicular to it. So if this is the line of intersection, I'm going to be looking up perpendicular, so in the direction of the pencil there. Your adjustable is the best thing to use in that case. So set the angle to match your line of intersection. Create an x1, y1 line up the page. Make sure you label it throughout. And then bring both ends of that line up perpendicular to where it originally was. So the highest point, the lowest point. The heights come from the elevation because you're stepping back two views all the time. So the base is obviously a height of zero. So I can just mark that off straight away. And the height is 70. The best way of transferring the heights is just use your compass. Mark it off in the auxiliary. And if you join them two together, you're going to get a true length of your line of intersection. Now, that's part of the question answered, so just make sure you make it obvious to the examiner. Label what you've just done. So I would label that as true length. Part two of the question, then, is asking for the dihedral angle between the two surfaces. So if you think back to any dihedral angle questions that we've done, the first thing you have to do is identify your line of intersection. We've done that. The second thing you have to do is get a true length of your line of intersection. We've also done that in our previous part. And then the final step is to take the line of intersection as it stands there and look straight down through the barrel of it for a second auxiliary. Now you can look down or upwards, it doesn't make any difference. But before we do that, we have to have at least three points on each surface. So if we were to look at surface A, at the minute in that auxiliary we have two points on surface A. We have both ends of the line of intersection, but we don't have a third one. The easiest third one is just the one here on the outside. So all I'm going to do is bring that straight up. Just make sure this angle hasn't changed. So bring that straight up. And the same for B. If I join both of those to either end of the line of intersection, I will have drawn an auxiliary of both surfaces. Okay, so A is slightly towards the front and B is hidden behind it. Now I can take my second auxiliary to complete my dihedral angle part of the question. So we take the line of intersection, the angle it's at there, and we look straight down through the line. Again, your adjustable is very handy here. Remember, you can look up or down, either direction. I'm going to look downwards. Create an X2, Y2 line and bring down my remaining points at the same angle. Now, 
Now, as always, we're going back two views for any measurements that we need. So because this is now an x2, y2 line, we go back one view, two views. So we're measuring from the x1, y1 line back to the plan view. You should recognise at this stage that if you have a load of empty space, you can just get rid of it by creating a measuring line. So we take the x1, y1 line and we just bring it closer to the plan view. And it just reduces that wasting of space in our second auxiliary. So again, compass is the best method. One of my points is on my new measurement line, which is the third point on surface B. So I can follow that down and just mark it off straight away. The next thing to do would be to measure how far it is to the line of intersection. Follow that down, mark off the height. And then finally the third point is the far one on surface A. So measure the length of that. Follow that point downwards, mark it off. And when you join those three together, you're getting an edge view of surface A, an edge view of surface B, and you're able to indicate the angle between them, which is what you're looking for. Again, make it obvious to the examiner that that's what you've just done. Make sure and label it. So that's your dihedral angle found.